Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, and good evening from the UK. Um, I'm not sure what time it is where you are, um, but let's carry on with this Microsoft 365 virtual marathon. I hope you're enjoying your time so far. We've now got Vivek Bat, Chief Technology Officer at um, Infotech, um, who's going to run through some of the records management hints and tips for learnings and learnings from global enterprises for Microsoft 365. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you and uh, good morning, afternoon and evening to everyone joining this session. I hope you're all safe and healthy where you are. Um, hello and welcome to this uh, records management session um, as part of the Microsoft Virtual Marathon. Um, we are uh, starting right now um, and my name is Vivek Bhatt and I'm privileged to be able to kick off this session on records management in Office 365. Uh, apologies for any background noise. If you get it, this is the new normal and I have a dog next to me who almost perfectly times her unusual sounds when I'm about to say something important. Uh, but that's aside, uh, let's have a quick look at the agenda. I'm going to the next slide now. Um, our discussion today will be around records management. We will focus on SharePoint Online, but with a point of view on other workloads. Um, we're going to start with some introductions um, sponsors, um, just a quick thank you. Um, introduction to records management in Office 365. I'm also going to share successful case studies, uh, lessons learned uh, from those case studies and how organizations and enterprises who have um, done successful implementation, uh, what has their journey been, what their critical success factors are, and what are the recommendations based on that, something for you to take away from this session as you are either looking to help your customers um, or your organization to start the adoption. And finally, we will have, um, and I'm hoping we will have a lively Q&A. So feel free to send your questions in and I will try my best to respond. Okay. Right, so very quickly, um, a quick introduction to Infotection. Um, it's a young firm with very experienced consultants. We are a Microsoft partner and we specialize in information uh, governance and protection capabilities and roll out in design partnership with our customers. Just a quick reminder, you probably have seen this a few times um, already if you have attended a few sessions. The SharePoint conference is now the Microsoft 365 collaboration conference. Uh, mark your calendars, it's in March next year. Um, it will be a great treat uh, for all of us um, be able to do this face to face. This is fun, uh, but it will be even more fun if we get to do this face to face, hopefully next year. So please make sure that you mark your calendar um, and get your registrations in place. And before we start the session, um, a thank you, a very quick thank you to the sponsors who made this um, happen and supported the whole, whole session and all the sessions which are going on around um, since yesterday and today. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to start with Microsoft's journey in this space of record management, also known as content and archiving services. SharePoint has been on a journey since 2003, and not many enterprises or organizations found SharePoint 2010, 2013 as a viable solution for records management. But something has changed, and things have changed in the last few years, and this is also reflected in the magic quadrant by Gartner for ECM, which was called in 2016. But then since 2016, uh, Gartner has called it something else and they now call it content services, but it is, it is the same comparison. And Microsoft has changed uh, quadrants from being a challenger um, to a leader. And this is a, com this is a completely different shift for Microsoft. And that is really because of some of the new capabilities which Microsoft has developed into their core product, uh, which is very much related to Microsoft information governance, uh, records management, retention labeling, um, sensitivity labels, and ton of other capabilities to improve not only just security, but compliance within the Microsoft platform. One more thing I want to draw your attention to is that uh, the fact that Gartner has changed the terminology from ECM to content services platform, and that really is because back in the days around 2015, 2016, customers will have to invest in multiple applications and systems, and they would have different names, such as enterprise content management, document management system, enterprise record management. 
But it's a very different story now with cloud as the shift to cloud is happening and in Microsoft Cloud, especially it's all content services now. So in a way, Gartner decided to abandon the ECM terminology and since then long live the content services platform or put in another way before the cloud era, uh, they were all called different systems and now it's all under the umbrella of content services. Now with the adoption of cloud, all of this has changed. It's all about having a secure and compliant platform, compliant content services platform with apps and components on top of this. And that's a very different way of handling systems in an integrated manner, as in compared to having different systems for different purposes. So in this new world, let the content be managed and secured in the platform with the business buying or building apps with different features and functions on top of this. Another benefit is cost. Now that there is a single system or a content services platform, you no longer have to manage different systems and hence the costs are optimized too. A leading legacy enterprise content management system for 2000 users often costs more than advanced data governance uh, for SharePoint with up to 20,000 users. This is why um, enterprise content management systems are becoming less and less popular and the content services platforms such as Microsoft SharePoint and other Microsoft services and Microsoft Cloud are gaining um, more and more popularity because of their ability to provide all features within a single platform. Let's move on to the next slide and let's talk about a broader topic of information governance briefly as we start this discussion. And one of the things which I, I remember from my past associations with customers and, and other consultancies is that when you buy a software as a service, the only lasting asset is the information. Information and its governance is essential to minimize risks, reduce costs and add value, and even identify new opportunities. And especially now with the rapid digital transformation that we have seen, in past months, uh, we see an ever increasing need for a unified approach for information governance. Something that we have seen increasingly and a demand from the customers to have increased information governance as they adopt rapidly the new digital transformation services. As data grows or rather explodes, we need this unified approach to discover, classify and label information. And labeling is core to our discussion as it drives the desired information governance behaviors. And we cannot expect our users to classify and label all information, not when the information net is casted widely these days to all information. This means information governance is needed in your SharePoint documents, exchange emails, Teams messages, and Yammer posts too. So we are really working in a world where Information governance, record management, compliance is across all information, not just one single silo. So what's Microsoft's response to this? And we entered into compliance, compliance center, which is a single unified portal through which information governance, records management, information protection can all be configured and deployed centrally. Now what you see on the screen here is is a high level description of the overall architecture, a very complex architecture which is implemented within the compliance center. You need to discover and transform information, classify and label information. And when the information is labeled, desired behaviors can be applied. Now these could be protection behaviors or governance behaviors. What we call within a protection behavior, as an example, an information which could be highly confidential within an organization as we see in um, in several industries uh, which go through acquisition or divestments. Often these acquisition and divestment activities are highly confidential and hence there is a need to manage those information in a secure manner. So such information could now be labeled as highly confidential and desired protection controls can be applied such as encryption. Um, that only individuals who are authorized can access that information, um, such as restrict access and watermark that information. 
your office documents, your Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and other file types are now supported in Microsoft Compliance to be able to apply uh, protection policies. What that means is that your information doesn't need to, or no longer needs to sit in, in a silo of a highly confidential system. It could be in Microsoft 365, it could be in SharePoint sites, but because the protection controls are applied, that information is protected and is managed according to the rules and desired behaviors, which are expected for an information of such nature. Similarly, on the other side, information governance um, enables um, labels to be configured with certain behaviors such as records management or retention and deletion of information. Once the label is applied, configured for record management, it can, it can enable record management behaviors such as um, the information cannot be deleted. It cannot be edited. You can also set automated disposition. Uh, and increasingly we are seeing with our customers that previously who were looking at manual dispositions or no dispositions are increasingly moving towards automated dispositions. We also now have a capability of event-based labeling, uh, especially for scenarios where information disposition or record disposition has traditionally relied on external events such as um, employee records, which by regulations, you must keep them um, X number of years, let's say 10 years, according to UK law, um, after the employee leaves the organization. Now, at the time of declaring information as a record, it's not possible to determine how long an, an employee will stay in the organization. And hence, the event-based um, labels provide the ability to integrate an employee leaving event, which could be happening in your business application, such as SAP or Workday, to integrate those events when they occur within those applications with your Microsoft Office 365 environment so that they can be activated and hence the system can automatically calculate the disposition date and determine how long the information should be kept. This makes the whole process uh, significantly streamlined and takes a significant amount of burden away from the end users in order to manage the information lifecycle and just by simply applying labels, you are able to uh, define a life cycle which is centrally controlled and managed. Not only that, Compliance Center also provides you with monitoring and management controls of the information, especially when with growing information and growing data, we could see millions and petabytes of information will be declared as record or will need to be managed according to compliance policies such as GDPR, um, or California law, as such as CCPA. Compliance Center provides the ability to explore and identify sensitive data centrally without having to go into different applications or different workloads, as Microsoft calls them. And when I say workloads, this is Microsoft SharePoint, Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, and other applications. Through that, you can centrally manage and use some of the features uh, such as label analytics, um, supervision or communication supervision or communication compliance, for example, to identify information and apply some of the artificial intelligence or machine learning tools to deduct that information and be able to take informed decisions or actions on that information. And finally, the end state of this application, as I mentioned previously, is all information. So not only just your cloud applications, we intend to take it further and broader to all applications, all devices, all apps, um, your Azure platforms, and any third-party applications. Okay, moving on. An integral part of ensuring governance is the architecture. Most organizations, as I said previously, are moving towards automated methods of classification. And how you structure and organize your information is absolutely pivotal to an effective governance, and metadata plays a key role for knowledge-driven organizations. I remember a quote from Forrester, and according to Forrester, knowledge-driven organizations can expect to achieve 30% annual growth in addition to being profitable and acquiring and retaining new customers. So there is really some benefit 
in looking at your architecture, uh, overall landscape, before you embark on the journey for record management. And in that, it's important that essential metadata is associated with all SharePoint or team sites, for example, and as much default values as possible is applied to prevent users any distraction while they're working on the information. And there are different approaches uh, that you can leverage here in order to architect how your SharePoint sites or team sites are going to be structured, organized, and also provisioned. We're not going to go into the detail of it in this session. Uh, that's for a separate technical um, session. Uh, but I'm going to touch upon just two, um, two methods which or two options which can be leveraged here. Option one, you could use SharePoint site design and logic app to apply metadata and governance on new sites. This is quite popular with companies or organizations who allow users to create their own sites or own teams, but still want to centrally control and manage and apply the right governance policies. And these could be your default metadata structure, your retention policies or deletion policies, and also label policies, we'll come to them later on, which allow and enable the behavior such as record management. The second option is that you could also use PNP framework to create a request process where every new site collection or every new team or every new shared mailbox in your exchange online goes through a form based request process. And that is another way to control the proliferation of the structures, but also to enable the application of information governance controls to these structures. And so in that case, the PNP structure enables you to apply a metadata template, a content type template, desired policies, file plans, and all different types of governance controls to make sure that when your users receive those site collections or team sites or exchange repositories, you have all the controls applied so that you are providing them with a structure and an architecture which is compliant by design. And all your users need to do is come and use those structures and collaborate freely in those structures. And the policy and the system and the intelligence behind the scenes will take care of um, all the details and, and all the compliance aspects, such as record management, um, identify sensitive information and provide confidentiality labels to it. Moving on to the next slide. Now let's have a look at once your structure is ready, once you have provisioned your site collections or your team sites, um, what does it mean to deploy a record management solution? And once your structure is organized and your policies are deployed, you are then ready to use and manage information and records. But before that, you need to understand what does a record label provide? So when a record label is applied to a document, as I said previously, the document cannot be modified. It cannot be deleted by a user. The document lifecycle is managed by a retention policy that comes along with the configuration of the record label. This could be automated disposition or it could be disposition reviews. So let's have a look at the composition of a record label. Now, this looks very complex, but this is all hidden from the end users. And from an end user point of view, when the user logs into the system, all they see is a single label which they can either manually apply it, or it can be automatically applied for them behind the scenes based on the metadata values which have been selected, such as um, one of my customers is using information status as a metadata. And as users work with the information, they change the information status uh, to final or approved. And based on that, there are auto classification policies which are active and constantly looking for information with such information status and declares them as record. Another customers um, are, are taking a slightly different approach. And instead of using automated classification, they have um, decided to use uh, default labels on document libraries or folders to enable users to upload information which doesn't re require any modification. And as they upload the information, it instantly becomes a record. All right. So let's have a look at a, um, a label configuration. A label has a name and has a description for users. 
that description for users is actually displayed to the users when they select a label or before a select a label. That's a great way for compliance administrators to provide a just-in-time advice to the users to when to use and some practical examples uh, for specific type of label and when it should be used. There is also a description for admins or administrators, which is quite useful when the administrators in compliance center are using the labels for various purposes. It could be automatically classifying information or building certain rules. A label has a retention component, which kind of breaks down into two key components. One is the retention period, how long you want to keep the information for, and the trigger. On what basis do you want to calculate the retention or the disposition date? This could be either the date the information is created or modified, or when the label is applied. Uh, most, pop, mo most customers choose label is applied because quite often when the information is created or modified, um, it's not a true reflection that the information is now, is now a record. Uh, because remember, once you apply a label uh, to an information, especially a record label, it cannot be modified. So you need to pick that very, very carefully. Um, what would be the key trigger for information to become a record and calculate such as its retention period? Um, and one of the other, other trigger is event, and I've already spoken about it. One of the key things to factor in when you create an event-based label is that you also need to factor in that the end users or through a process, an event needs to be associated with an identity of that event. What, that, what I mean by that is, let's say an example of an employee record event. When that employee record event label is applied to a file in SharePoint, it needs to be associated with a unique identifier so that it can be associated as an employee record for let's say the back part. And then it would be easier afterwards to associate that event with a specific ID when Vivek leaves the company, rather than triggering the event for every single employee in the organization. So bear that in mind. And for that reason, the event-based retention um, uh, is something that you should use carefully. And we have seen quite a few scenarios where customers have used event-based scenarios and they struggle to trigger the event because there is then an action to apply or associate an identifier to it. So we recommend that you use event-based records for control processes such as HR processes or asset management related processes where there is a special team or dedicated team to look at and monitor event-based records and can implement some of those controls which quite often can't be managed centrally. Let's have a look at the next configuration is disposition. Um, disposition can be automated deletion. Uh, you could trigger a disposition review, which means at the end of the life cycle, somebody will be notified to take an action and they could either take an action to agree with the disposition and delete the information or extend the retention period or do nothing. And that again is, is a critical point in your decision making process and especially knowing that the information is going to increase with time, you also need to factor in how many disposition reviews are you actually and practically going to do over the next course of 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So again, the recommendation is um, identify specific labels which would qualify for disposition reviews. Otherwise, go for automated deletion and make sure that you have um, managed your change, guidance and training to your users so that they are using the right retention labels. And final configuration is a file plan. This is the latest addition to retention labels in Compliance Center. The file plan allows you to add specific dimensions to a particular label. It allows it to be to have a reference ID, um, a business context, and also provide legal citations. So for example, um, especially for review and audit processes uh, purposes, it's important to understand which legal citation or which law specifically is driving the need for the record label. All right, let's move on to the next slide quickly. 
So that was record management labels or retention labels as we call them. But information governance is incomplete uh, with just managing information as record. As I said previously, there are two components to it, the protection and the governance. And any information protection strategy is only as good as your ability to discover and understand the sensitive data. Most organizations are largely unaware where most sensitive data lives and how much exists within the organization. We've greatly simplified the ability to discover sensitive data and use this information to define sensitive data, protection, data loss prevention, and record retention policies. And so I would encourage you to think about when you're developing your record management um, adoption strategy to also consider identifying sensitive information. You don't, for example, want to declare something as a record which has personally identifiable information, and hence the two go, in, go hand in hand. With the sensitive information identification and information protection, um, the capability works across devices. Uh, it works on client, web, and mobile. So that's a really, really cool feature about information protection, and it, it further complements the retention and record management capabilities. Right. Let's look at some of the case studies, and I have two case studies for you today. Um, one of the first case study is, um, is a global client um, in oil and gas industry, highly regulated, and they contacted me last year about helping, helping them define a new strategy for enterprise information governance. And then to implement this, they had already gone through a process of identifying and selection procedure of products and capabilities. Office 365 had already become the new platform for collaboration for them, but they didn't expect this to be also their information governance platform. And this is where I mentioned previously that a lot of customers had previously considered Office 365 for enterprise collaboration, content or document management, but didn't consider that it could also provide compliance record management and information protection capabilities. And hence, as a result, they had a separate system for record management. They had a separate system for managing highly confidential information. And therefore, we did several proof of concepts early on to identify the right solution. And this included a number of third-party products and solutions which are out there in the market. And as a result of that proof of concept, the clear winner was Microsoft Office 365, not alone, but with the integrated capabilities of Microsoft Information Governance. And I talked about that is available in Compliance Center. Um, that is the key feature, and that really is the key juice in converting and transforming Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Office 365 into a compliant platform. In that case, people just describe what they're working on and record declaration and retention is set to automatic based on this. And that's something which we proved during the proof of concept. Now, the key to achieving this is having an up-to-date catalog of information that needs to manage good metadata model with master sources, site provisioning we talked about to set default metadata, and users to select what information that they're working on. And that's what I mean is what, uh, what information is a draft or final? And Microsoft Information Governance does rest behind the scenes. It applies the retention, uh, deletion, sends information for disposition reviews, et cetera, et cetera. The overall benefit in this case study of deploying Microsoft Information Governance was that users experienced an improved search with progressive filtering, having records in context with relevant business documents. And as a result, the company is now rolling this out um, globally to roughly about 37,000 users while migrating data, about 100 terabytes of data from other systems, including their SharePoint on-prem platform to Microsoft Office 365. And then the next phase of that would be uh, planning to decommission uh, their content silos, uh, such as record management systems. Okay, let's have a look at the next case study. This is a global financial client with up to 80,000 users, again in a highly regulated industry. 
And this was really an intervention at the client request to perform an independent review of their ongoing governance strategy. We reviewed and identified changes to the overall strategy uh, for a closer alignment with the financial author authority regulator. We developed a technical solution blueprint, which was again based on Microsoft information governance. And that technology strategy was all encompassing, all data sources, not just Microsoft SharePoint Online. And this is a unique case study in a way that we extended the record management capability beyond SharePoint Online to exchange online um, now to Teams and also transforming uh, network drives and other repositories by bringing them into Microsoft 365. And our company helped them to leverage a market standard classification process, uh, data cost justifications, program directions, and the cleanup of their entire system. It is all possible due to Microsoft information governance. And one of the things actually I want to draw your attention to is that these solutions and these configurations using Microsoft information governance, which are being implemented in Office 365, they are able to demonstrate sufficient compliance back to the regulators. Now, in this case, it's the worm, worm compliance to the financial authority to be able to make sure that the records are immutable. And once immutable, they cannot be changed. They cannot be tampered. And that's a significant change. It's not something that you would be able to do uh, three or four, four years ago using Microsoft Office 365 features. OK, let's move on to uh, the next section of this presentation, and we are going to look at the critical success factors. And I have three critical success factors to share with you before we end this session. An information governance strategy is essential to kickstart your adoption in the right direction. In fact, there is an old joke from five, six years ago that ECM, which is Enterprise Content Management, also stands for expensive, complex and minimal. And I'll let you figure out why, because these programs tend to be quite expensive and quite long running. Now, coming back to the strategy, you need a clear vision, which is aligned with your business objective. And my recommendation there would be to leverage your brand vision, to connect your records management program to a bigger purpose. It's great for inculcating your employee buy-in by telling stories that communicate and enforce the company's culture, value and purpose. Next. Define your success factors. These are important to achieve your records management program success and also define and ring fence the scope of your records management program. Is it increased level of compliance? Is it unlocking business value by curating knowledge? Make sure you list them down and make sure it becomes part of your business case. Having a clear requirements is also essential. And I've actually seen in my experience that this is where most projects spend too much time. My recommendation is to create use cases instead of requirements. There's no point writing hundreds and thousands of requirements which nobody will read in a document and will go out of date very, very quickly because the technology evolves. Instead, focus on use cases. They relate to business scenarios. They relate to a business problem. They relate to personas. And they relate more closely to a practical situation. The next is blueprint. Define your blueprint and your foundation for success. Run proof of concepts before you embark on a full scale program. Identify what works, what doesn't work. Involve your users. Make them part of this journey and bring them along as part of the validation process. And then based on that, refine your solution design before you mobilize um, your planning activities. Plan based on your validation and feedback that you have received from your business or customer. Um, Keep focus on quick wins. Be agile from a planning point of view. You want to deliver quick functionalities, uh, quick wins as early as possible. Don't wait for the solution to be perfect. Don't wait for the solution to be 100% ready. Uh, and that's why stay focused on your success factors. It's important to define your success factors ahead, um, ahead in the game so that you are able to then plan accordingly and deliver quick wins. And have a clear business case, have a clear benefits of change, which you can articulate back to your business. A big part and a big success factor in developing your strategy is to identify the case for change. What will be the change impact and how will the users go through that journey? With Microsoft Information Governance, you will find, and as we have seen with other customers and case studies, 
a technology is is the easy part of the equation here but behavioral change um, communication training etc and providing guidance to your information governance network is 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 going to become more and more important and will be an essential part of your success next up um, critical success factor two is um, choose your design correctly um, it's okay to say that you want everybody to apply labels manually or declare records manually but think about in context of all information auto apply retention label consider auto application of retention labels consider machine learning to help your custom uh, customers or or employees get over the line uh, for example um, you might want to consider using machine learning or auto classification capabilities for existing information which is already sitting in there train your classifiers train your system to go and automatically classify existing information rather than having to waste your business and your resource time in manually going and classifying all of that information. Apply a default retention label or record label to all content in SharePoint library, for example. Set up your users, set up your site owners, and set up your information governance custodians in a way that they are able to achieve some of these benefits um, and be able to automate either at a central level and deploying automation policies or at a local level, um, which I mean by in your SharePoint sites and team sites, library folder level. OK, let's move on to the next slide and talk about modernizing your management of records. Now here, many organizations and many enterprises try to use record management principles from the paper era to manage records in a digital era. Now that's a very difficult task and that requires a change in mindset. When you are going through a digital transformation, your mindset also needs to go through that change uh, of not think about how you manage paper records. You need to think about managing electronic records which change, which are dynamic, and et cetera. So which fun features and which functionalities are you going to leverage in order to make that program successful? And I'm going to share some of my recommendations for simplifying and automating records management in Microsoft 365 and other areas. The first one is establish a corporate compliance team. Don't rely on the business to define how records should be managed in their business. And especially with regulations such as GDPR, you really need to have a central records management strategy. You need to have your record management policies, your retention labels, and what commonly known as a retention schedule for group records management. A global enterprise will need to comply with several thousands of legal requirements for how records should be managed. The business will now, the value of the information over time, but the correct retention and security classification should be set and must be set by a corporate compliance team. And that must consist of your legal, compliance, privacy, IT, and information management experts. Okay, number two, ensure you are compliant by design. Don't force your users to manually identify, capture, and classify information. Okay, it can be done for initial phases. It can be done while you are exploring, you're doing proof of concept, but at scale and long-term, from a sustainability point of view, um, it's not ideal. OK, so you really want to invest in automation of records management. And that's when it goes back to my previous slides about structure, having a governance and having a metadata schema so that you can use that and leverage that to automate records management. Go for big buckets. And this is something which I've seen a lot of organizations waste a lot of times creating a lot of retention schedules. And in other words, different labels. So for example, um, contracting and procurement as a retention label. Organizations, especially working in different geographies, may have different local regulations to manage contracts. So for example, in the UK, if it says keep for 10 years, and in US, if it says keep for 15 years, then choose the longest retention. Choose a big bucket to make it easier for yourself and make it easier for your business. 
um, and consult your um, your legal teams and compliance team that you're okay to do that. Um, ensure your corporate, uh, corporate requirements cover your local requirements. I was engaged with a customer who in their record management system had about 5,000 different retention schedules and we managed to reduce them down to about 200 retention schedules using the big bucket approach. So my advice would be to please don't invest a significant amount of time and resources implementing different retention schedules for different locations. Set your corporate requirements based on the toughest requirement. As I said, um, you know, for contracts, uh, pick, pick your longest retention um, and go according to that. The next, we talked about disposition reviews. And my recommendation there would be get rid of disposition reviews as much as possible. Uh, and again, we've seen time and again that organizations who have um, who have managed records in the paper era or old record management systems um, have a keen desire to manage disposition reviews and review every single thing before it gets disposed of. Now there's a place for disposition reviews and specific type of information and specific type of records you might want to consider for disposition reviews, but for the bulk of the information, go for automated disposition. I did a calculation um, and as an example, if 10% of disposition reviews of 10 million records, each takes about 15 minutes to review, you're still talking about roughly about 31,000 days. So you can do the calculation, the amount of time it will take you to do disposition reviews if you choose to go for every single information. We talked about event-based retentions uh, previously. My suggestion there would be to minimize event-based retentions. Keep them to very specific scenarios. Again, don't complicate your user experience and waste your IT resources on event-based retentions unless absolutely necessary. I'm not saying don't use them, use them carefully. Event-based retention requires users to add unique metadata. Now this can be automated with PowerShell scripts, et cetera, which means that you will have to invest in more customizations. Okay, um, example employee number, agreement number, and the triggers, et cetera. So my suggestion would be to keep event-based records for very specific processes, such as employee records, health and safety records, et cetera. And finally, consider automated disposition of non-records. So while it is great that you are building the system for record management and integrating this with Microsoft 365, think about all the other information which will not be declared as a record. And in order to drive the adoption of record management and people identifying the information and the right information to keep as a record, it might be necessary to automate the disposition of non-records as well. And one of the great examples of um, a number of customers whom I have spoken to are actually encouraging a tenant-wide policy to delete all information which is older than certain years, for example, one year or two years. In some cases, it's even shorter and then deploy record management capabilities to allow users to identify information that should be kept for business, legal, regulatory, or tax purposes. So it's essential to ensure that all information has a life cycle, not, not only records. And you can achieve that by doing automated deletion of information. Again, one of the key components of Microsoft Information Governance. OK, I'm just going to go on to the next slide quickly. And that brings me to the final slide, call to action. And here's my final tip. Leverage benefits of Microsoft capabilities and Microsoft compliance assessment. This is offered to Microsoft partners, to customers. Um, it's a three-day workshop which helps you understand the compliance posture in your systems using automated tools which are built into Microsoft 365. So it doesn't require any additional software to be installed. It's already there in your, in your tenant if you have the right licensing. And it also provides you with a high level strategy to drive your business cases for records management or your business case for records management. Now that's really important. It's quite a game changer in my view because your record management strategy and business case is now capable of being informed by real statistics and real data that is coming from within your organization 
from within your system rather than having to rely on additional systems. And you might be eligible for a free workshop. You will have to check with your Microsoft account team um, or you can send an inquiry to uh, the email address info at infotection.com. Um, and, and, and that really is, is something that you need, you need to explore on. And it's called compliance workshop or compliance assessment. Okay, on that note, I'm going to pause briefly and check if there are any questions. Hi, Vivek. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, we, we've got a question from Rob Kosher in the Q&A. If there's any more, please let us know. Um, Rob asks, do these record management tools work on content pages too or just the documents? They work on content pages, documents, um, list items, uh, etc. OK, and that's all we've got. OK, thank you. Um, just a few more slides to go. Um, if you have any feedback and you'd like to leave any feedback, uh, please um, use this to share the feedback. And um, and if you're ready for a raffle, um, please go and um, submit your entry um, and answer the questions. And finally, if you are um, in the mood of donating, then please uh, give your donations to these two charities. I've been doing fantastic work 